what is up guys welcome back to wednesday stream and holy shit today morning or yesterday night was a a dumpster fire to say the least in terms of news uh we don't know if it's going to be good if it's going to be bad but we're covering it in today's live stream as always i'll give you guys a couple of minutes to get the announcements going and for people to know that i am live so they can slowly start trickling in while doing this time i will be just checking to make sure all of the live streams are working so youtube seems to be fine c money is already there smile monster is live what's up buddy welcome back welcome back then twitch is also good and x is also working properly and that seems to be the first bit out of the way now i'm gonna start with the games first i'm gonna get my daily theme not the daily theme daily gaming like the 30 minutes that i normally do uh at the start of every live stream out the way and then we can probably jump into some champions arena while we talk about what happened <laughs> over the last 24 hours like holy shit uh, ab attendees jumping in miranda's theme tetris game incoming our stop step broad how the common ground world game has progressed because the chili team has taken over the development for that game yeah that is true and musashi has been basically uh taking over all the lead development for a quite majority of the games for example common ground world he's now one of the leads in the vox first so i'm guessing musashi is working the way gala wants work to be done so he's basically organizing all the teams for all these developments there's three ways that the news we got goes the first way is the most positive where the gay the chilean team takes over they make a better game pump it out faster and the quality is the same or if not better than what the miranda's team was promising the second one which is the middle ground is they build exactly the same thing with roughly the same vision uh just a bit faster and the third one which i preferably hope it doesn't come to this but quite a lot of people have been like throwing it out there in the mirror discussion is they build the game they allow all your nfts to be usable in that game they have some sort of play to earn model to fulfill the promises saying oh you can use your nfts the nfts earn something and you can use all the ones and do all the promises that they stated but the game is basically a shell of a game it's not an actual fully fleshed out game that continues to be developed it's basically just you set it and done type thing now i don't think it's going to be like this hopefully it's one of the first two options that i mentioned but we will go through the discord and then we can go back and forth like the chat can always chime in as um well that's live stream right the chat always chimes in i'm going to go my viewpoint you guys can start typing your viewpoints and we can like kind of figure this shit out <laughs> what are you talking about what happened face when come on chaos you're the person who messaged me while i was in bed at like two in the morning I was like yo bro miranda's chat is on fire so then i started scrolling and browsing through it i read i caught up to where we was and i was like holy fucking shit bro and attendees was like yo come stream if you get out of bed i get out of bed and then eventually i couldn't get back to sleep because everything that i was reading just woke me up like my body was like you have to get up bro like you ain't getting back to sleep so i woke up went to discord had that on one screen had open sea on the other screen and was had like some of the guild discords for miranda's going on my third screen and i was just trying to see like what is everybody doing i did though manage to pick up a ship for fairly cheap so i'm happy about that but i did miss all the sales today like when Jake was dumping, when like two, three other people were dumping, I was at work and work got fairly busy. So I couldn't put in bids for some of these items. I would have loved to get a couple of hoys, not even a couple of hoys. I would have loved to get a couple of docks, a hoy, maybe a horse, a lantern, you know, everything that was on sale that somebody would want if they're still going to play Miranda's. Now I am going to still play Miranda's. I can't just basically make a decision without a lot of information this is just the tip of the iceberg as you say we don't have the information we don't have the development process the roadmap what the team has done if mccarthy is still developing uh who is left and who is not left like they just recently did a post you know what let's skip the gaming part at the start for now let's just go straight into 
the topic which we did just get started on. So we'll go straight to Discord. Yo, Mojo, what's up, bro? Welcome back, welcome back. So if we go over to here, now since this is all in Miranda's discussion, I can share this with you. If if it was in Gala Go, like right here, I'm, I'm not touching that shit because they're pretty sensitive right now. So I don't want to be caught in a rock and a hard place. But if we search for from user, uh, well, I guess we'll start with Benefactor. Let's go with Benefactor. And then, uh, roll it up. See, now this is difficult, right? All right, let me just... Go down. Oh, wait, wait, wait. From user, benefactor. And then in. In. Like that. Miranda's discussion. There we go. All right, so we've got quite a lot of these messages at 1, 22, or 4, like here. <coughs> so. The first bit of, well, Bitbender was talking quite a bit before. You know, let's just start at the top and we can work our way down. So basically, it was okay up until here. It was like normal conversations. Like you see here, Jay Hughes. Well, now he's just a normal Discord member. He's got rid of all of his roles. Uh, and then right here, this, this right here, it started with Family Man talking to Jay Hughes. Like what happened? Did the people that can't make the games just kill the one that the most people were sticking around for? Yo, SSG, what's up? We are going over what's happened in the last 25 hours. And then Bitbender is like, what if what is true? And then what about Jay Hughes? I think shifting is probably a better term. These are absolutely moving around. But the whole purpose is to serve the community long term. And deliver the promises that they have been made. And hopefully at an accelerated rate so one of the main points that you'll see over the course of reading all this is that bitbender keeps talking about an accelerated rate of development yo technique web3 drama yeah bro legit like one of the games that i was actually hyped for the one game that i was like once this game comes out i'm going to be playing it as much as albion online and you know how much i went hardcore into albion online but the development team has shifted and there was a whole bunch of drama, I guess, 24 hours ago ish. Well, not 24, like 20, 18 to 20 hours ago. So we're just reviewing it with chat and everybody that hasn't actually caught up. You can just like watch this back or send this to people and they will go through it. All right, cool. And then we have what exactly does this mean? Dubstep Rod with the unsmiley face. I was in bed at this point, yeah. Like, I was in bed until you see me start typing because my boy Chaos was like, yo, uh, this is happening. And I was like, nah, that can't be happening, bro. You're it's April Fool's was nine days ago. Somebody actually wrote that. And I was like, the same thing. It's like, you're April Fooling me, bro. And then I look at it through my phone in bed and ba my body wakes up like that. <gasps> Just pulled a jury off a 10 token summon. Can't believe it's going to cost me 2000 to mint it. It's $1,300 to mint. But it's 26 minting scrolls. So if you're playing the arena, you're going to get a couple of those SG. But which you have a decent team, so you should be fine. But uh, then we move on to there is nothing second rate about anyone or anywhere involved. All right. So to get context, you have to go to news.gala.com to understand what's happening. Oh, it's in your currency. The Australian dollar. Okay, that would make more sense. Yeah, I'm talking about dollars. In pounds, I think it's like a 1.1k. But you want to go down to here, you go down to the Gala Games News, and then this article was released yesterday, which is April 9th. And it basically states, USD so high, well, yeah, I guess so. Uh, explaining the, uh, not explaining, expanding horizons. Gala's Mirandas accelerates towards launch with an expanded Chilean development team. Now... I saw the article pop up, but I was like, I'm going to sleep. I didn't read it. I should have actually read it. So now I'm going to actually read all the articles that come up. But Gala is excited to unveil significant advancements and expansions in the development of Mirandus, an innovative fantasy MMORPG that promises to redefine the boundaries of blockchain gaming. As the development team in Chile undergoes a remarkable expansion, the anticipation for Mirandus reaches new heights, signaling a rapid acceleration towards the game launch 
this development is not just a milestone for Gala, but a testament to the company dedication to pushing the frontiers of entertainment through the power of blockchain technology. So based on this first sentence right here, you can see that there is a, a change in dev team. Like it doesn't say it outright, but the development team in Chile is no longer like the Miranda's development team. Well, the old school Miranda's development team that got the project up and running from 2020, 2021. It's like, oh, we're going to add the Chile development team to this. The newly expanded development team in San Diego, Chile brings together a device of talent groups and individuals who have contributed to some of the most iconic and innovative games in recent histories. Their collective resumes include a decent work of blockbuster titles such as world-renowned Battle Royale Phenomenon Fortnite, DC Legends, Zedron, Rock of Ages 3, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Sprinter's Fate, Tetris, as well as the Fallout series of games. This strategic tower defense challenge of Star Wars Galactic Defense and many more. Uh, 8 bit Tendi's likes to do the Tetris joke, which you will see a lot in the, the chat. But yeah. Uh, so these are the first two. Now we're gonna wait. Chat scrolling pretty fast. Uh, thoughts on the third person? Would you welcome it or prefer McCarthy's person vision? So I would actually welcome third party, uh, third person view, because majority of the MMOs are third person. I would also welcome tab targeting. I'd also welcome PvP. I think they need to study RuneScape because if they just make RuneScape and add the Web3 side of it they would make an amazing phenomenal game you'll find out more why some of this happened but we'll just read the article and go over the discord what i would like to see is no daily pool no leaderboard payouts you basically play the game you craft equipment farm resources any of that stuff you put time into the game then you get something out for example resources or materials or monster loot whatever and then that is traded to another player and that is how you make the play to earn. Don't pump tokens into a game that doesn't need tokens. Don't pump a system into a game that doesn't need a system. Because MMORPGs make complete sense, the perfect sense for Web3 technology. Like NFTs, tokenomics, all of that shit. Make a Web2 game, add the Web3 tech. Stop trying to make a Web3 game with crypto bros. And then trying to force a game with this like weird ass tokenomics so we'll get to that in just a sec as well did you get the lantern of the sun no ssg i did not but i still do want to buy one i might trade for it if it goes fairly uh well if it goes to my price range but if, if you know anybody that is willing to sell one please uh tell them to dm me i'm back the tetris joke and no third person what do you mean no third person i guess first person is more immersive and you could do the vr with first person third person opens up different type of mechanics and most gamers are used to third person so i'm guessing they are just going to stick to third person but first person works it will depend on combat now because the old school combat was action combat instead of tab target and combat and action combat works very well for i'd say third person i guess first person is doable but action combat works very well for third person because you need to position your skills and you need to position your like spells right first person you're not going to see quite a lot i guess that's what makes it more challenging and makes miranda's hard because that was also a hashtag at one point yeah no fucking leaderboard payouts bro exactly as you say chaos bro you don't need leaderboard payouts it ruins the game I'm okay with PvP areas, but it would be chaos if PvP was universal. No, no. So basically, like RuneScape, right? You have the whole world. You can explore the whole world, and it's PvE. And then once you cross a certain threshold of like a... There's like a general border or a zone, which is called the wilderness. I can get the map up, bro. What am I explaining it for? Old school RS, uh map. Inventory. Not inventory. Images. All right. Let's go. The new map. Correct. So, oh, this is current. We don't want current. We want the actual. There you go. No, the client option. I don't know. Okay. Uh, give me a high detailed map. Like, holy shit. Is this one? There we go. This is one. This is 2005. So basically, this is RuneScape's world map, right? 
all of this from here all the way down to here all the way around here up to here and all of this up to this so this square section right here this is called the wilderness this is where pvp happens once you cross this border it becomes pvp zone and you can have the same type of zone in mirandas like this border right here this is a pvp zone and anybody that's in the pvp zone can get attacked by other players now runescape does it where there's levels in the wilderness so down here will be level one and down here is like 55 and the level difference is what you can attack so for example say you're level 100 and there's a level 120 right here but you're in level 10 wilderness they can't attack you because they can only attack 110 but if you're up here and there's a level 50 difference and you're level 100 and you run into 120 they can attack you so you might need to balance it like that with like masteries and experience however they tend to do it but i would love for a specific zone where pvp is enabled then everything else it is pve like you're fighting bosses here you're crafting here you're gathering here you're slaying monsters you're doing agi like agility courses you're doing quests all of that shit down here like major citadel falador major citadel varuk major citadel west of drog then you've got alcarid and then you've got uh the known place which is the grand stronghold right here I think the move was good thing. A lot of the vision I mapped out, they just needed to brute force. They did need to speed it up. Also, if you guys didn't know, uh, the Walking Dead Empires team has also been hand... Well, the Walking Dead Empires game development has been handed over to the Chilean team. I'm not sure if it's like the Mirandas where some people have stayed or the whole team has been moved over, but we will have to wait and see. Uh, what I didn't like is the playtest was when you were melee attacking, you couldn't see uh, shit in the sword, or, I mean in the crowd, that too. That's why tab targeting and third person is generally a favorite for Emma, hardcore MMORPG players. But Miranda's is a new vision, right? So the first person would have been a change and as well as the action combat. The one thing that the action combat of the way that they did it in the previous playtest is some of the skills, that the NFT skills that you would get, or the spells that you would uh, cast would be kind of difficult because you're mapping out certain hotkeys and they wouldn't, in the previous playtest, you couldn't change those hotkeys. If you were, if you did have a hotbar and you could change them around, then that would be completely fine. Gala rocks. Well, if they pull this off, then yes. It'd be like Rise of the Phoenix. Like their reputation or trust has slowly been going down now it's at rock bottom if they pull this off it'll be like the revival of a phoenix but yeah let's get back to this real quick so where were we set in the vast and vivid imaginary to world miranda invites players an epic narrative ruled by the five player monarchs this game breaks free from the controversial confinements found in traditional rpgs by eliminating the standard maps and quest givers Players are thrust into an expensive realm where freedom reigns supreme. They can explore untamed wildernesses, confront formidable monsters, serve the realm's monarchs, or carve out their own domains with grand cities. So it's going to be interesting to see who the five Citadel owners are. Quite a lot of people already bought them, but do they still have them? Are they interested in Miranda's new vision? Are they going to work out a deal with Gala to see if anything else happens? We'll have to wait and see. In the light of these exciting developments, Gala's new game development studio in San Diego, Chile plays a pivotal role. Under the leadership of Pablo Mera, the studio is poised to become a crucible of creativity and innovation, accelerating the development of Miranda's and enriching Gala Games' portfolio. Uh, and then Dennis Han, Gala's lead technical officer in Chile, highlights the strategic integration San Diego's vibrant game development community in the creative process promising to deliver a gaming experience that resonates with players worldwide. So that is a very bold statement. We'll have to wait and see how that goes. The establishment of the studio under Gala's commitment to empower local talent and contributing significantly to the global gaming ecosystem. As Miranda gears up for its new launch, new content pipelines are being accelerated and updated roadmap will soon be revealed. So if you didn't know, uh, I need to go back to Discord because I don't, I don't want to lose track of where we are because we'll go back to that in just a sec. So let's go to the new Discord. We go up to Miranda's announcements, which is right here. Now, if we scroll up, you can see this. This was the timeline posted by Miranda's master it, like a week ago. Uh, Miranda's master has a mayor role. 
So he's still in Gala Games. He has Gala Games Plus, so he's still part of the Gala Games thing. But he's lost quite a lot of the other stuff. He's just got Gala, Discord member, 1K active. And then he's still in part of the team. So basically in April, which is right now, in the next couple of weeks, we would have meant to have the Calder Horde test with Materium. Then in May, June, in the next couple of months, we would have had another play test. Then we would, at the end of the year, had the Enter the World of Miranda's play test. And then Q4, we would have had five zones, three dungeons with class, deeds, and building placement. This roadmap has now been scrapped based on this sentence uh, right here, where new content pipelines are being accelerated and the update roadmap will suit me real. So I don't think this is going to go through, right? They're basically going to revamp it, say, oh, we're in the process of transitioning or whatever they want to use uh, to basically uh, push this back. And then a new roadmap will actually be revealed. Game looks like Albion. Smash that like button. There you go. Thank you, Tendies. I forgot. If you're enjoying the content so far, smash that like button. Uh, the game will be... Well, The Walking Dead Empires. Let's quickly do uh, Empires. This game is going to be like Albion, basically. Of This is why I was playing it. Uh, technique. I'm just going to click Kobe. It basically a top-down 2.5D asymmetric game where it's like Albion Online. You build bases, you PvP was meant to come, you gather resources, you collect, build your armor, build your weapons, slay zombies, conquer zones, that type of stuff. But we'll get into that. Let's focus on Miranda's for now. I have smashed that like button. Oh snap, chair bandits sir. Be careful what you say, guys. Nah, I'm just joking with you. Uh to buy Chi8 Miranda's? What do you mean, SSG? Maybe I should sell some my Jurel. I don't want to be gamified by Champions Arena like milking it forever. Well, if you get your minting scrolls from the arena in the next couple of weeks or months, then that will lower the overall cost and then you can mint it and then probably give somebody a discount, which they will likely go for. As Miranda's Edge is closer to its launch, the player community can anticipate experiencing a similar surge in movement and openness that has recently been characterized by both the Vox and Common Ground world teams or that's what i'm guessing it is so the common ground world teams and the vox teams have taken uh oh have been taken over by the chilean development team so all the progress you can see what the team is doing you can go to those games as an example now common ground world has turned over new leaf with the recent developments a lot of people are enjoying it they still play it to get more info about Common Ground World, you want to check out Dubstep's Rod channel as always. Now, Vox, I get all my information from Vox from Tofu, and then I do watch Chattervox. So if you want to catch up with that, you can check out Chattervox. Also, they did release a new piece of information uh, a couple weeks back, if I can find it on my Twitter. It's going to be down here. So basically, the Voxverse is now going to be a mobile game. This is a preview of the Voxverse version 0. I think version zero might not even come out. They'll just go straight to version one because they're going to develop it like that. So if you own one land, it will be one of these icons. And if you own many, you have several icons on the map. Then all your NFTs that you have for the Vox first will be in the inventory and they will be usable. This is one thing Musashi has said that he wants to get up and running right away. He wants all your NFTs that you have owned to be usable or be ready in some sort of way. And I do like that about him because it basically means it's not sitting in my wallet forever i can actually use it in some way hopefully it's like a temporary measure and then it goes into the actual way you want to actually use it but the voxels are also going to be in game in whenever the version one or version zero launches and you can use your voxes by flinging them onto your frontier to get them to start working now you can find more information here or you go to chattervox shout out to chattervox which is jeff Video unavailable? What are you talking about? Oh, nice. 80 people watching. Smash that like uh, chat box over here. And then basically you go here and it has all the chat box episodes because they're now recording the promises and what the team has said. So there's actual log of what is happening and for the community to know that uh, the new team is developing like this. This is what they've said. So this is where I go to get all my Vox information. So make sure you pop in over there. Uh, that can minimize this as well. Uh, oh no, Jurio ain't going to go cheap. It's going to go for premium. Well, yeah, Jurio is currently the meta champion right now, along with Mikko and Vera. So I'm pretty sure you can easily sell it for above the average 
price. But yes, this translates to a significantly increased update cadence. So basically means they're going to speed up development, ensuring that players are keeping in the loop with the latest developments as the pace that matches their enthusiasm. So basically the people have said, oh, we want the game. And apparently the old team was developing slower than what Gaila would have liked. So they're like, okay, we're going to add more people to the team. And then something happened. But um, we'll have to wait and see for more information. This is basically what I can read. For This is my viewpoint on what I've gathered from all the things that have transpired over the 24 hours. Furthermore, there will be greater communication around key milestones, enabling a clear and transparent roadmap for what the future holds. So this is a big thing, right? Most of the third party developers by Gala, like launch an update, launch a test, do something, and then they go silent for like four to six months. Now the Miranda's team did keep weekly updates. They kept Tuesday, uh, Wednesday updates, which was Wallpapers Wednesdays, talking about the game, weekly Friday updates by Jay Hughes, which gave you the tech side and everything like that. So that wasn't an issue for them. I'm guessing the issue was the slow development. So they had the communication side down, but if the team is going to be as, the new team is going to be as, as communicative as the Miranda's team, then we're going to get no issues there, right? It's for the Walking Dead Empire side, because the Walking Dead Empire's team would release an update, go silent for a month, get like an AMA out, go quiet for a couple of weeks, release like a minor update, go quiet for another couple of weeks, then release an update. And that generally wasn't good because a lot of people in the Walking Dead community got frustrated by that. And as you can see by the current player base, there's not a lot of people playing because there's not enough content or not enough like minor updates to keep the people interested. They have said several things. For example, there was meant to be dungeons merging as well as a couple of other things by November 8th last year when the game was meant to launch, they saved themselves by calling it a public development build and opening the game fully to the masses so they can play all the time. That that bought them a good three to six months. Uh, I think people are starting to catch on. It's like you can't just call it a public development build and not give us any updates and push back what you said you were going to give us and work on other things. So we'll have to wait and see. If you're wondering why I'm talking about The Walking Dead, it'll be apparent in just a sec. Importantly, this expansion aims to foster increased engagement with the community, inviting players to be an integral part of the development process. Uh, then you should have a Discord channel where people could, well, they already have the Discord uh, text channel to give out ideas, but you should actually get a bunch of people to give their input, like that offline meetup, but I would open it up to the global that people are interested and have general good opinions or thoughts about the game you can like balance it with like people that are well known in the community people that have a bunch of assets people that speak for the people or the people nominate to be part of the development uh how would you say the process but we'll have to wait and see how that goes as well the rationale behind the team's expansion in Chile is not just about scaling up, it's about enhancing the team's capacity to the full commitments, expandable content delivery, and enhancing the utility of player items within the ecosystem. So this basically means you've bought a bunch of NFTs, we're going to make sure the NFTs are usable in the next couple builds of the game. Uh, the strategic move is designed to ensure the gala not only meets by exceeds the expectations of its player base, reinforcing the company's uh, dedication to build a rich and responsive gaming environment. So they're basically saying we're going to keep McCarthy's vision and make it better or make it so the player base enjoys whatever happens with the direction of Mirandas. In addition, the team expansion for Mirandas, a similar influx of Chilean talent, will also bolster the development of the Walking Dead Empires. So basically, the Walking Dead Empire's team, um, when we go into Discord, you figure it out, but they might have been replaced or some, one or two people are still there and they've bolstered their ranks because if somebody's still there, then they haven't replaced the whole team, but they just added to it. Gala invites the gaming community developers and Web3 enthusiasts to stay tuned for updates at the San Diego Studios, begin operations embarking on a mission to craft the next generation of gaming experiences powered by Gala Chain. So that was the whole article that was released yesterday, which basically started the shit show, which is in Discord right now. Somebody's tagged me, but I don't lose my position, so we're just going to ignore that for now. And then we go back to here. So there is nothing second rate about anyone or anyone involved. Now, Bitbender's talking about the Chilean team, which we heard about just now. He's saying that they're just as amazing as the current Miranda's team. 
Now, does that include the historical precedents? I think that's what it means. Uh, let's quickly Google that. Uh, priority of importance. Okay. Apparently, Gala has had some past issues with second rate or else wouldn't have had the Vox Surprise or the Gala Music Dilemma. So basically, what he's talking about is the Vox team not building what they were supposed to and going off the script and doing minor other things and not having a fully functional game up and ready. They just had bits and pieces of like things here that they didn't put together and there was no like version zero which the current box team has already started and it's gone up and running and the gala music dilemma i'm pretty sure you guys know a majority well if you're in the gala music ecosystem you know what the gala music dilemma was but we'll stick to the gaming side for now so that is what they're talking about i've never post but what the fuck is going on with jay hughes because at this time You'll see in just a sec that his role was removed and he made a post in the Adventurous Forum or one of the other forums in Mirandus, uh, which you'll find in just a sec. Now, I would agree that the general sentiment, however, I think it's important to note that with the removal of some of the issues in specific instances, they have accelerated and kept moving in a positive direction. So basically increasing the speed and making sure everything is on track. Is McCarthy still in charge? Now, you guys will know that this is a big thing for a lot of people that are in Mirandus. The main reason being is a lot of people were sold on McCarthy's vision. And as long as McCarthy was at the helm of Mirandus, a lot of people had faith that everything was going to be okay. Now, Bitbender says that McCarthy is still at Gala, but we don't know if he's still developing Mirandus, if he's the lead developer of Mirandus, or if he's just going to be helping uh, the process along the way which you'll find out in just a sec and then it links to the article and then family man posts this friday update 119 it has been an honor and a privilege with a broken heart so this is basically when they get announced well they get informed not announced sorry that they are no longer in the miranda's team or working with the miranda's development and then, so you fired the entire team. Got it. This is Jesse Haynes, uh, formerly Law Tank, 2021. If you're in 2020 in Gala, you will know who Jesse or Law Tank is. And then, what is this article trying to say? What are we talking about? Uh, what are we not talking about? And is Miranda's Master not here? And then, Rectful Ken, what the fuck is going on here? Which everybody had the basic idea of what is actually going on here. Then you have in the in what world does a renewed commitment to development and shipping a title on accelerated timeline consider rugging? Now, I don't mind if it's accelerated. I don't mind if the development team, well, kind of, uh, but as long as the quality of the content you are pushing out is not rushed, that like you can accelerate the development, but as long as you keep the quantity, the qual not quantity, quality the same then it's fine if you're just speeding up to push the game out and get it out there for like just to say oh we've got a game developed i am not going to be pleased with that as i mentioned at the start of the video i have no intention of going anywhere oh so this is basically deleted comments uh this is when like the ban waves the perma ban waves the timeouts all of that started and you can see there's a lot of deleted comments right so this basically goes over in responding to a couple of trolls or fudders as they call it now on discord because you can't share what you think if you're very emotional uh can you plainly say whether miranda's master is still in charge of miranda's and then everybody starts chiming in it's like what's happening this is not what happened so uh, scooby says they fired the us team so they can save money with overseas team now bitbender keeps saying that it's not a money issue they have a money issue it was a speed, time, and cooperation type thing, which we'll find out in just a sec. Up on stream and tell us uh, the community demands it. This is Rusty Spork. And then you basically get a bunch of community members going back and forth. As far as I know, we didn't delete it because they were referring to this post. And then Rusty posts it. This is what happens. So if you go to the Miranda's Compodium, uh, well, I don't want to switch because I'll lose my place. But you can go there and then check it uh all we do is what we think is best for the gaming ecosystem now benefactor comes in like after like 20 minutes from bitbender going back and forth of what is happening he's probably got word that miranda's chat is kicking off and everybody needs to reinforce it uh oh let's go over chat real quick i pity the fool who doesn't smash that like button uh 
Baby Z, what's the new pet system in the update on Champions Arena? We currently don't know a lot about the pet system, but we do know it's going to be NFT only pets at the start. There's going to be a limited quantity and they will give you buffs or give you some sort of power creep to enhance your gameplay. They've just added the tab to get ready for the sale or for when pets actually become a thing in game. Now, right on the hills of the landmark community gathering to craft something that would stand the test of stupid too. Looks like we're back to being ignored again. So a lot of people get emotional and you see that uh, I did kind of like what the fuck is going on? Because as I said, I was in bed. I woke up. It's like I was drowsy. I was like almost going to sleep and it was like, bang, this happened. So uh, everybody's like, what happened? And then we have here, Benefactor, just say if Miranda's master is driving Miranda. So a lot of people's deal breaker was if McCarthy is still in charge or not. It's that simple. We deserve to know what we've been hearing for years supporting you. We've been here years for supporting you. Many of us have spent hours a day following this specific channel, which is true. It's too early for pets. Fix broken gameplay. Well, pets will be coming out in season two, which we have just started. So in the next two to three months, you'll see something related to pets or pets being released. So is this part of the Epic Week? Now, what he's referring to is Bitbender over on Twitter said previously that this week is going to be epic and he's looking forward to it. So we've got a Bitbender, Jason Bitbender Brink. Also, if you're not following me over on X or Twitter, make sure you do. I post all these information and announcements uh, as soon as possible so you get the updated information. Uh, also, Wookie being right here, I can tell you've been, so if you go here, going to be an epic week, which was a couple days ago, and then Wookie says, I can tell you've been quiet, too quiet. This also means a lot's brewing inside Gala HQ, and that brewing was the bombshell yesterday, as well as other things. And then Bitbender goes back saying, shh, don't clue them in. So it's like banter back and forth, but this was the main tweet that they were referring to right here. Mylan, can I see your Zafrina stats in equipment? Yes, you can. Good, sir. Let me get that um, running on the side. I guess we could take a little break and go to the game side and then come back to this. But let's launch OB. Well, let's launch Nox for now. All right. I'll do it in the background. I'll do that. So, us of what I say will there will be those who will just scream at any change there is always someone however in time i think you'll be happy with what you'll see we have a duty to do what is best for the community game and company there is no way there is no two ways to put it if you don't believe it that's fine just wait and see how everything plays out in the wrong run so basically they're just saying just wait and see like you trust us which is kind of hard to do with all the recent decisions and some of the changes related to some of the games but we will have to wait and see because if a lot of people are investing Miranda's the hardcore people I don't think they're going anywhere they're just going to be here until they see some sort of gameplay some sort of light paper some sort of ray of hope or path forward if not they'll get rid of their assets and move on which we'll talk about actually I can just show you we go to OpenSea and then go to Miranda's Maybe I should buy my friends an example for 30 bucks. The good stuff's still expensive. Yeah, well, it would be because nobody... Well, actually, to be fair, somebody did start dumping crazy. Like, real crazy. We go all the way down here. Go back to, like, 20 hours is. Uh, 18 hours ago. Go down here. You can see there's a lot of shit that just sold like this that got dumped instantly. Like I've been scrolling for so two days, one day. There you go. Not 20. It starts here. So basically people selling dragon, the dock going for $213. And then you see quite a lot of the land deeds going for cheaper. All the higher bids just going off with the farming hamlets. Potion shop, the L's going for 1.4 to 5k. Weapon shops, dragon vouchers, archery stands, then the elf slowly going down. Kraya selling for 11, uh, 1.1. And you can see everything slowly starting once all the bids are fulfilled, just slowly starting to go lower and lower. Ahoy sold for 0.7 weave, which is 2.4k. 
keep going keep going town of the marquess sold from everglen to resdium for 4.8 to eth that's 17,000 almost then the village of the vice count sold for 20k the ranching hamlet sold for five village of the vice count 16k ranching hamlet elves down to 1.4 dragon vouchers orcs at 80 way for 3300 the horse is going for 300 slowly slowly going down right everybody's just getting rid of what they have the hoy is down to 2k the lantern going for 1.4 everybody's selling everybody's selling the horse is going down exemplars going down elves going down docks to 1.3 and then docks to 500 wave motion sell to radcliffe uh, the outpost for 500 and then you keep going keep going farming hamlet for 1.8 elves gone down to 500 this guy went crazy kisper and then you just see here farming hamlet then lantern of the sun i'm so pissed that i missed this i wanted the lantern if anybody does have a lantern and wants to trade it for something do let me know and then you have like the dragon vouchers the granaries everything going and then this uh the cray out selling for 600 Keep going, keep going. Pickard selling for 300. Dragon vouchers going for 20 to 30 dollars. Exemplars going for 18 to 20 dollars. 100 right here. But like, holy shit, bro. Human exemplars, 20. These are epic exemplars as well. Halflings going for 150. Ring of Discord dropped. Branching Hamlets, 2.4. And if you see here, I managed to get a Crayo for 540. So I put in a bid. And I'm so happy that I got it because I did sell my ship and I was getting FOMO because I didn't have a ship and I would love to get my ship back. So over the last week, I was like, I do I put in a bid for a ship. Let me see if I can get a ship. And then there was the lantern that was also going for like one ETH. I was like, do I get a ship or a lantern? And then it looks like uh, the gods or the force in the universe said you get a ship. So I managed to get that uh, 18 hours ago when everybody was dumping when I turned my computer back on uh would have loved to pick up, up that land exactly everybody would ssg smiling how early did you start playing champions arena if i'm not mistaken it released around august 2023 i started on the day of launch so it's been roughly six ish months i think since i started playing uh champions arena yo lou how's it going hey sleep smiling still looking as beautiful as feather thank you thank you gotta do that cute pose that uh, asian people do or the, the ladies do the force you must be a jedi <laughs> All right, let me quickly what did i need to do let me grab this go back here let's quickly do that and then go to my champion prina so i i upgraded my levels to 301 so she's fairly stronger now and then my equipments are this which is plus 30 with plus 4 attack 4k attack my gloves which is plus 6k attack my chest plate which gives me like plus 800 attack then my boots which gives me plus 4.7k now this ring i'm gonna swap out for a damage ring but the reason i have it is because battle start rebirth this is a huge thing for casters and then my aura is 400 attack i ranked mine up to 16 it has 32k attack almost well 69k hp and then 7.9 Okay, defense and then 258 perception and crafting so those are the stats ssg i'm gonna go back to here uh what do i need to do i guess i could just auto battle in arena for the meantime now as you can see here docks going for crazy ham homesteads ranching hamlets dragon vouchers the basic shops and temples village of the vice count going for 5k docks going for 1k the horses down to 200 docks down to a grand hoy for 1.3 and this is this is when jake started dumping so single and poor is basically jake farming hamlet gone 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 hoy elf examplars for 500 to 800 halflings the crayon more elves more elves bunch of shops ships horses the majestics he basically got rid on a fire sale like actual fire sale so there's a lot of people who are now new majestic and large stable and jewelers owners outposts homesteads firebred stallions and you can see basically how everything was selling on quickfire 
Now, if we go back to here, let's get, you know what? Let's minimize champion tree. Let's quickly work through this and then we can go back to the gaming side. Um, they, the user's name is not read anymore. I think it's time for the Miranda's IP to sell to community. So a lot of people were emotions high and then there's a bunch of deleted messages. I'm getting a ping, which is from who? I would have to worry about that. Move that over. And then it's basically Bitbender going back and forth and answering some of the community questions. Uh, and he says that he's not going to take blatantly assaulting comments. He's not Bitbender himself, but the team started doing ban waves and all of that type of stuff. And it seems like the guys are hoping that this all blow over some initial rage. I hope you're right, but it's been heck of a risk to take with so many of the original supporters also jumping ship and so many uh, of ones that are remaining citing Randus and under McCarthy and his team to be specific. The only reason they were still here. A lot of people, it was basically for this reason and this reason right here. And then as you can see, Captain Nero got banned and then everybody's like, what happened? Everything's like, what the fuck? What are the basic questions? And then people just asking for answers. Not paying back, just taking it as it is. If we stopped doing shit every time someone got angry, we would never do nothing. And that is true. You have to keep pushing on. But Gala needs a guy to basically tell Gala how to release news. Like, oh, maybe not now, maybe later on. I was like, oh, you shouldn't phrase it like this. Or maybe do it like this. Because let's get a community guy and be like, yo, this is what the community is going to think when you say shit like this. And then you just basically, you can disagree, but you're not allowed to be disrespectful, which is there, but emotions are high. And then you just keep scrolling through. People just saying a bunch of stuff, which is, it's obviously he's gone. Whereas Miranda's master or material master, well, it's not material, it's Miranda's master. And then everybody's slowly popping in and like realizing what's happening. A Tendi, shout out to my boy right here. He's like, wait, what? And then everybody starts the <laughs> starts posting gifts and all of the other stuff. I'm worried, man. Please don't be extra me being here a long time and excited for this game and not something and something big has changed. I don't know if it'll be better or, and nothing you say can change that thought. So a lot of people are like, why did this happen? And then it goes, I don't believe we are. Benefactor says he didn't believe that they were in uh, the path to success with the old team. Now that is huge. Right, because McCarthy is one of the founders of Gala. He was one of the first employees at Gala. And he's basically saying, well, I didn't believe the game was on the right pace, but we don't know if it's for the community or if it's for a business standpoint or if it's from like the company standpoint. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see with additional information that comes out in a couple of seconds. I'm going to drink some water because my throat is dry from talking all night. But yeah, it was to the point where it's like it's slow in development and they didn't see the way that the game could be successful. You'll find out in just a sec when I ask Bitbender a couple of questions. So scroll down to what Wiki says. What interests me is how great the Chilean dev teams are. Do they work hard and fast? And I suppose the next question is how hard is it to hand something over like that from team to team? So a lot of times when you're transferring projects or development, it takes a couple of weeks to get everything sorted, even a couple of months. So we'll have to wait and see how long the playtests have been delayed and what is going to actually happen. And then as it said, it's a real shame, really shocked by the decision. Everybody was a number of things, but I pay attention to designs, economic design, back end stability, live operations and willingness to grow it. So keep this, this center to nine willingness to collaborate. So I'm guessing like Benefactor, Bitbender, whoever in the higher ups were saying, yo, McCarthy, we need to do like some sort of changes from Miranda's. And he was like, no, I'm going to build it my way. It's like my way or the highway. This is my baby. And it was like, yeah, but some things aren't working or you need to speed up development. And I guess there was back and forth. I don't know the full story, but this is what willingness to collaborate means to me is like the, the team and the business with Gala is like the business, the company. And then the development team, which is Miranda's, but Miranda's is owned by Gala. So they're like, we got to do some shit. And they're like, yeah, we're doing that shit. And you got to remember the Miranda's team is all remote, right? Whereas this new Chilean dev team is in an actual studio and they're going to be working 
on quite a bit of stuff together in house so apparently it's really really fast like gala hq when everybody's in gala hq apparently the production and efficiency has skyrocketed so hopefully they're trying to do the same thing for development teams and that's why they basically sh shifted all their titles to this chilean team and they're going to expand that chilean team to make it i think miranda's had 40 devs working on it the Walking Dead Empires had roughly 30 to 40 devs working on it. 70, but that included the Dragon Strike team and like the Meow Match team. That is, yeah, what is going to happen to Dragon Strike and Meow Match and all of the other games that uh, Ember Entertainment was building out? Because Gala bought the rights to Ember Entertainment. So we'll have to wait and see. I didn't even know about this. It seems like a terrible plan. Uh, I disagreed with the overall emphasis on all work being done to the voice disgustingly thing uh we can have done that with ai but the whole dev team so now people are saying some of the things they didn't agree with some of the things that they did agree with and just go back and then this i'm all for whatever brings a better game they had years to work on it maybe the new team will push it out quicker and better so this is the big thing it can be quicker it can be better but the quality should still be the same i'm focusing on the quality here because you can push out a game in the next couple of months but if it's not what we want it's people are gonna riot yep and then wookie's like how much info can we squeeze out and then did we confirm that the original team is gone and or are we just expanding the team and then romaga goes mccarthy is out give up the cleaned house for real so people start to get emotional right here and then the, the gifts have started chaos my boy yeah i don't think mccarthy would stay if he can't do it his way which is true because mccarthy was like this is my baby it's my vision i want to do it like this big thing for me was the passion for the game and mccarthy's team had it which is true but we don't know this uh chili developer team they could be just as passionate or even uh more passionate i would say better passionate but that didn't make sense i imagine there'll be an updated roadmap i am aware of that is being worked on so basically don't expect the playtest or the current playtest anytime soon. And I think the way stuff was going to be handed out would be revamped. Now we keep going. Keep going. And then this is when I wake up. <laughs> I just post this gif saying, what the fuck did I just like read through? Because I was trying to read through all of that and I actually managed to get it here. Uh, and then Benefactor says that would not make sense. So he says, I say run the playtest now and let us decide how it's going. And it was like, yeah, that's not going to happen. Then we have Virtual, who is the double duke. And he is one of the three leaders of Masters of Materium, who have quite a lot of assets in the world of Miranda's. I have, because Benefactor says, has you ever built a large, successful business? And he says, yes, I have. Is one of the people that can actually... Uh, apply to that statement and i'm curious how letting go of a world-class team that was firing on all cylinders a smart business decision build a world-class team is one of the hardest achievements and the Miranda's team was world-class so he's not exactly lacking the news and then we keep going because the chilean team is exactly that so benefactor is saying the chilean team is a world-class uh highly efficient like you could say a uh, team that is building that will be working on miranda's and then sage maker chimes in objectively they are very good work hard and fast with decades of relevant experience so we'll have to wait and see what the relevant experience is you'll see in a sec what the the, the chilean team have worked on and then what the miranda's team have worked on then they have the same vision as uh do they have the same vision as mccarthy and is are they motivated uh all of us to want the game in the way that the old team did now we keep going through and then kahoot says guys april fools was nine days ago this is what i said yeah like april fools was that as days ago and then you go right here eight bit attendees pointing out that gta delayed from 2025 to 2026 via the entire gta dev teams taking a little jab right there uh at the process right there and then you can bet a lot of them were looking for jobs after that bit bender de defending the current situation and then what the actual fuck is going on legit any person with the diehard miranda's community and they will all say that miranda's team is the main reason they believe in miranda's yes because the way that they spoke the way that they talked the way that they did the updates a lot of people did enjoy that and that is one of the main reasons that people were staying 
And then 8-Bit is like, why not just expand the team versus replacing them? Was it the incompetence issue similar to Vox? So he's talking about the issues where the Vox team was uh, piecing together little things and not an actual fully playable game or working on the box first. And Bitbender responds, no, I didn't say it was similar in that sense. Vox was like a hollow shell without a ton behind it. It's just the question of execution and velocity and developer, uh, developing, not developing, delivering on the promise. So basically they want to develop, uh, develop, <laughs> they want to deliver on the promises. They want to make it fast and execute it efficiently by the looks of things. They want to get a playtest out. I guess they want to get the persistent playtest build out for Miranda's, which is going to buy them a lot of time. Like Web2 games where they say, oh, we are early access. And then it's early access for like 15 years or 10 years, right? So I think that's what the public development build is the term for Gala. We'll have to wait and see. And then there we go. Now people are starting to throw out different types of ideas. Yeah, as Centurion says, cheap labor. Well, I guess you could say that. We'll figure it out. Well, they'll talk about that as we go down. Um, I think people put too much focus on a single to to sex. WWE recently changed leadership and the product is better. Why not Gala? That's the thing, though. A lot of people were attached to the old team and they're emotional because basically the, the person that they've seen as like the holy grail that would make this game amazing has basically been shifted to the side and an unknown holy grail that nobody knows about has been put into place we don't know if it is a holy grail or something else so we're gonna have to wait and see based on the recent news is well news is news to come in the coming days and then wookie's like i actually do like the third person option it would be incredible i am also of adding a i'm also in favor of adding a third person because most MMOs are third person. I don't mind first person or third person. First person makes it more immersive and makes it a little bit more hardcore. Third person makes it more, you could say convenient and more, you get basically more field of view. And in MMOs, you need a lot of field of view. And then without McCarthy, Mirandus is a rudderless ship. And then I catched up couple of questions is the game going to be the same or are you revamping it so is it going to be the same as uh, mccarthy's vision or is gala going to put its own spin on the game will the play test be ready for may mayhem because it's a month away what makes the new team better than the old one and is it going to be a gala economy or a new one what i mean by gala economy is basically um where it's just like leaderboards daily pools this fixed model of like oh you gotta put money in then the people get the money out no player time or player input is put into that formula so i was like is this going to be a gala economy or the mirandus one and the mirandus one uh, did incorporate player time player resources and player skill you could say or potential of what they could do now we scroll down uh <laughs> And this is where the Tetris meme starts, where 8-Bit says, uh, the new team has worked on Tetris. And then, oh, wait. What was that original message? Well, it looks like it's been deleted, so I can't get all the information. Yeah, but look, uh, Box and Gala Music is still here. That's what I was saying. It, it, it's going to go forward, regardless of what people say or what people think. Now we just have to wait to make sure it goes forward in the right direction or a better direction. Then, but we never know what direction it could have gone because it's no longer possible. So we'll just have to wait and see. Then they can Tetris the economy to make it work. That's me starting to throw little jabs. We don't need the leaderboards payout in Miranda's. It should be a player driven economy. Now I stick by this. MMORPGs are player driven economies. Stop putting random crypto web three uh, tokenomics or like features in a game that doesn't need it. It's an MMORPG. It's the game genre that makes 100% sense for NFTs and blockchain technology. It's fairly simple. You can't fuck it up. But we guess we'll have to wait and see what the new economy is like. <laughs> and then Bitbender is like, come on now. That isn't fair. People work on a lot of things. And then as you can see, a lot of bands were starting to pop off. Yeah, it's a jab, but it's basically what we know from this article. They've worked on Tetris and a few other titles like the Fortnite and a few other things that I read just a couple of minutes ago. And Ranch is like, is the Walking Dead team booted? Which we did find out in the article, but most people skimmed through that. 
at this time because they were just lost it in the first two paragraphs when they said Miranda's had a new team. And then, as you can see, game is dead without McCarthy. Quite a lot of people agree uh, because he said 100%. And I will not tolerate people being assholes. And then Ben is just saying uh, he's going to ban a bunch of people if they're being dickheads uh, or balance. I guess I shouldn't say it. <laughs> well, whatever. And then, dude, the amount of money you guys put into the game, I would be like, yeah, these people have put in thousands, maybe even millions into the economy. And then there's me, not like this, like what is actually happening, what is going on. Uh, I really would have liked some of the ideas and direction for the gameplay economy we all helped with. Feels like a wasted trip now. This is talking about the offline meeting that they had in Texas. So when is the Gala Collective building Mirandas? Uh, I did a misspelling called Miranda. And as you can see here, Punjab was like, I like the idea of Miranda better. And as you, people are just going back and forth, people are saying, who wants my Carvel? That people slowly started to troll. And that's when, as you saw the open sea, that's when all the stuff started to dump. And it's like, I'll give you one Gala. And then everybody's like, a Fortitude Tower. I'll give you a... <laughs> He's got a hundred of those. And then you see a basketball court. Just keep going down. Now it's basically a back and forth between the community and a bit better comes back. I will be back home next week with my computer microphone so we could do a couple of streams there. Now, if I go down, um, we want to succeed. That's the only reason we're doing this. So it looks like they didn't see a way for the old game to succeed. And I agree, literally zero people have used it. Uh, can we have some goats? Get rid of the exercise room and make it into a studio. And then are we keeping the economy the same way or will you gallify it? And then this guy responds, what was it before Miranda's fired? And we go down here. The economy was the economy that was proposed would require something like 5,000 players with a thousand whales, each spending three grand in Materium a day to have a game that would sort of maybe break even. I didn't it didn't work well on paper, and it needs to be dramatically expanded both in terms of players and made much more affordable. So basically what they're saying is we're going to be uh, revamping the economy model. They're going to make it free to play to solve the player issues based on the previous sentences that you hear about. I'm just saying, and they're going to make it more affordable, which basically means uh, the free to play model where most people can play and they can still access the game. But the NFTs will probably be like the walking dead where the exemplars keep the stats and traits and whatever and they are the ones that are tradable and if you have basically a like a common hero, uh, human if they release a common human nft then you will have just like the basic gameplay if it's not an nft then it's a database thing and then you won't be able to transfer it and then he's like i love the idea of a circular economy and hope that sticks that is a saying that you don't want to hear hope that sticks so that basically means they will be changed we don't know what is staying in the economy and what will actually happen now, people who bought stuff, given that I bought a ton of stuff, I would hope not. Uh, I think this game to be awesome, like, not to be rude, but nobody cares what you're, you've bought, Bitbender. The community is different to what you have. And then I believe somebody posted somewhere uh, of Bitbender's wallet. And then go down here. I will say, so my guess is the 50k cap on players' examples will change, and it might be a free-to-play route, like you mentioned last year in the AMA. So Bitbender and McCarthy... We're going back and forward. McCarthy was like, there's only going to be 50,000 players ever because of those 50,000 exemplars. And then Bitbender was like, no, you need to make it free to play and have the exemplars have like awesome uh, buffs or boons or have abilities, etc. And then Bitbender's like, this is what I've always wanted. So based on the information, I'm pretty sure Miranda's is going to go free to play. It's no longer going to be gated by the exemplars. It'll be like the Walking Dead Empire's persistent playtest where you can log in without an NFT, play the game with a free character, but that character is locked to your account. You won't be able to transfer it or transfer the progress because it will just be to your account. It's not an NFT. To transfer progress, uh, you will need the NFT. For example, any NFT, human, dwarf, or calfling, or elf. Now, the mods start kicking in because the chat was popping off. Uh, I'm doing it at a slower place, but this thing was going crazy. Now, what was the free-to-play model? Like a non-exemplar characters. And you just see me explaining what I just said back and forth to 8-bit attendees. And then something along those lines is what I was thinking. Normal people and then the exemplars who have the special abilities. So basically, the normal people, the free-to-play people, they don't have special abilities. And then the exemplars will have what is basically described 
as their special abilities. It better not be shitty special abilities, right? It not better not be like a 5 to 10% boost. It better actually be what some of the abilities said, like the ability to sneak, the ability to convert energy to uh, mana, the ability to have bonus to all ranged weapon damage. Like all of that stuff better be up to play. That bonus better be like 25, 50%. It better not be like 10% bullshit, especially if it's an elf. Uh, guess how surprised I am. <laughs> Observer popping in. The general sarcasm. And funny enough, totally random, that chair showed up at the same time I've been in DMs. I'm pretty sure Neff and quite a lot of the other community mods that are well favored in the community got spammed with a bunch of DMs. Everyone can play with a free to play account, human and character, but NFTs uh, as Bitbend and I've just mentioned. The option would be nice. I will use the other original Miranda's 3D person images as my background on my computer. And now they're kind of trying to deflect what is going on. And then it would be, oh, let's add PVP. Let's open it up for open world PVP. And I was like, oh, yes, actually open world PVP would be a awesome idea. Uh, OK, if the PVP in the game, then I'm for the new team. This is when I started to shift, because if you do add PVP and quite a lot of the other things that people did want, then I guess the new team is what it meant by not cooperating properly with the old team. PvP third person, and then everybody starts trolling about adding random suggestions. Might as well add Sword Art Online's floating tower, like in the original art. So if we go to Miranda's uh, 2021, I can show you the image right here. Bang. This is the original art for Miranda's before it blew up to be what we know it as today. And as you can see here, you have Sword Art Online's floating castle. Well, it's not Sword Art Online's floating castle, but at that time, Sword Art Online, uh, the second or third season just finished. And this is what everybody was referring it to. And then you have classes, for example, Warrior, Archer, Mage, which then transitioned into a classless type feature where masteries were a thing, but you still get classes which give you skills or bonuses to certain things. Now, I'm very unhappy, not going to lie, even if the game isn't dead, an entire vision I bought was in was for McCarthy and the dev team. Now, I feel like they'll just turn into another rushed AA game published uh, plastered production. So this is what we don't want. Uh, I would rather the team take as much time as possible before the next playtest and before the actual like public development build or an open beta build goes live. And now it's basically a back and forth between the community. Personally, I would like to get something serious out and then illiterate on the live service that stays up and grows. So this is what some people fear is like they rush out a game. It basically live service. You can use all your NFTs and then it will be like, oh yeah, now we've basically provided on all our promises. It's going to stay up and then it will slowly grow. So that's what we don't want. That is like the worst case scenario. Now Luch chips in. The dev team is in jeopardy now. Uh, they got the Sicilian boot as well. Yes, we find out that they did, but at that time, I don't know. And then I say ahead of the game is going to be interesting, which is tomorrow. And a bit benders like, poor Anita, maybe I'll go home. And then it was like, they explains 45 minute match break times for nobody's playing. Everybody's in chat for Legendary Born. And then McCarthy's vision was one of the last few pearls of hope because Gala has had a rocky, uh, rocky trust road on their recent decisions and this was basically what was holding quite a lot of the community in it was mccarthy's vision for mirandas and mirandas was basically the holy grail for being able to save gala and gala's web 3 gaming side it's sad to say we'll forget the glory of the ones really this is another thing that they will never get the glory of releasing the final game it's just a slap in the face of quite a lot of these and somebody was meant to be uh the final game so we need a whole six hour live stream on this. Let's make it happen. And Tenny's kept pushing me to get up out of bed and start live streaming. Well, this is a live stream. You can jump in if you want. Good sir. Uh, smiling. I'm awake. Yeah, this was like the 2.33 in the morning. Uh, and then it says we're both in bed. And now it's just like banter back and forth. And then... Um, uh, bro, the only person we trust you and chair, but he might also time me out. So you, if one man is gone, not, uh, but that's back and forth. And then go, this is the article because some people are scared. I would argue very strongly against that sentiment. Some of the third party games have been rocky, but I still believe in the vision and I'm happy to see the progress being made. If we go back to this, so far every game that Gala has been involved with has failed in my eyes and I have not seen a worthless NFT 
and I've seen so many worthless NFTs and now it seems to have launched more. So we'll go back to Gala Game. We can actually see in terms of, well, well, we'll go both by gameplay and in terms of, uh, so Common Ground World gameplay has gotten better. The competitions are what keep people there. So they're happy. Legendary board gameplay is amazing. Uh, the game was replicated properly. The earning side, we haven't tested fully. Well, you need the NFT to test and I don't have NFT. So we have to wait and see when people start actually getting NFTs. I guess the people that do own Deeds, Taverns and um, the NFT heroes, they made quite a bit of talk. Eternal Paradox, one of the most fleshed out games on Gala's ecosystem. I'm not sure about the economy side since I don't play it as much apart from Season 1. Then Champions Arena, the takeover of Liam has made the Champions Arena development shift into a positive light and i'm actually looking forward to the changes for this game i'm also selling a rank 16 zafrina and a rank 16 zoe if you are interested it's one of the best wombo combos in the game now echoes of empire it got released it's not a strategy 4x it's like more of a strategy 2x it doesn't have half the features that eternal paradox has and they're roughly the same game but different genre this is in space this is in fantasy you need all of these features in this game to be it to be considered a proper game Legacy is basically like launch and it went silent after the Vic Quest bug. I don't play it as lot. I just log in to get my daily gems. Spider Text, we all know there's an issue with game media there. It was a decent game. The economy was really rocky and honor was atrocious. Glad that they've got rid of it. Walking Dead, really slow, has a lot of potential. Last Expedition, fairly good game. I do like playing with the community uh with the devs every Friday. So I'm enjoying that. This is also Gala's uh shooting game that they hope to push out to make it one of the best the dragon strike meow strike uh meow strike meow match these two are at by ember entertainment so we don't know what's going to happen to them but i don't play these games mirandas as we were talking about <laughs> it's a free to play role playing mmo didn't that be mmo rpg okay whatever then superior also has legal issues grit is dead there's been no communication it's offline uh, Tavern Games, Battlestar Galactica, and Fortitude. Yeah, so I think the only game that is decent in terms of gameplay is a ton of Paradox. Champions Arena has gotten better. Everything else still needs... Oh, Superior is amazing gameplay. But since the legal issues, I can't exactly say like the tokenomics or the updates have been better or worse. But Superior is one of the top five web 2 games, hands down. It needs to be continued development. Next to that, it's a ton of Paradox. I guess Common Ground World has an overall structure ready and good to go. So we'll have to wait and see. Now we keep going down. And then I'm here compared to the old roster. I'd say the old one's better. This is referring to the games that they have on their roster. So if we go down, I post the image. This was the selection of the games that the old roster has worked on and as you can see here majority of these games are mmo related or rpg related storytelling games so it made sense for these people that have worked on these games to be building miranda's because it's an mmo rpg and then if you go back to the article it tells you what the previous team have worked on Which Abek keeps saying Tetris and then Crypto Views like, are you streamers? Like, nah, bro. It's Tetris. There you go. Never misses a beat. The Tetris meme. Uh, no, this is what the old team worked on. You look tired because I was when I recorded that video and I was at the current time. And this is what a lot of people were basically like. And it just keeps going back and forth. Keeps going back and forth. That was basically the coverage. The shitty part is that Miranda's felt like the Web3 of what Web3 was supposed to be and the devs taking talking to the community input and allowing us to build the game with them. And then you realize at the end of the day, devs and our decisions doesn't matter all that much. But that is another punch in the gut by quite a lot of people. Uh, that's how they feel. An article doesn't really go into the nuts and bolts of making it happen. I probably shouldn't drop a video here. Wookie drops a video explaining what happens. Where's the positive? I love to see it because there wasn't a lot we'll have to wait and see and then a lot of people were watching Wookie's video to stay up to date and we can keep going keep going keep going it's basically a community going back full community talking and then bang the land and sale happens at 0.125 ETH and then this is when OpenSea popped off 
in the sense that as soon as everybody saw this, people were making bids like mad. They're going crazy. And I did stay up and that's when I got that ship. And then after that, I was like, I have to go to sleep because I got what I wanted. There's no point in staying up. I had work today early as well. So, yeah, we basically I said I was going to sleep, but then I just kept, I was in bed and I was scrolling through and reading everything that was happening in the chat just to make sure nothing crazy nothing else crazy happened and then i suppose may it be the new teams to restructure all around will be huge in the new teams made progress are much faster and i keep saying if it's as long as the quality isn't hit i'm good with whatever's gonna happen um four years isn't fair in uh, M four years honestly isn't far in any mmo development cycle a lot of them take eight to ten even 15 years uh, they make fine progress in my opinion for a great game with persistent playtests for the community coming very soon great games take time to do something unique takes time and i know some ambitious project can take six to eight years to make now as i said if they want to make good quality shit i don't mind delaying it but at the end of the day make sure the game is quality we don't want none of this oh the game is out we fulfilled our promises you can use your shit and be like, yeah, it's a public development build. We'll update it like every now and again. And then that's, I believe, the new guy that is now the game uh, director at Gala, which I think was M uh, McCarthy's position. So we have to wait and see. And everybody's just trying to figure out information and dig what is basically happening. It's like Nephilim's just basically like the answers are going to come right away. And this does affect a lot of people. And it's basically just a, a back and forth. Some of these guys are biggest asset holders are supporters of Miranda's, which is true. And keep going. Torches and pitchforks. And this is the old Gala vision, which was what Miranda's was meant to look like. But the... The team expanded so much and the love for the game expanded so much they had changed the art, the style, all of that stuff. Keep going, keep going. I guess we get to the part where I slowly start to go to sleep because oh, then I'm back. Uh, we'll be like The Walking Dead. You can play for free with a common exemplar and the NFT ones will earn and give you a boost to earnings uh, based on the new free to play model. I hope we get something that we can play all the time. That's been most of the most annoying part. So that is the persistent play test. DLC money, are you a bot? Are you actually there? But yes. And then Joe Bennett saying Discord doesn't run off the American Constitution. Which basically means uh we run on our own rules. Go back and forth. Yeah, it's 4 a.m. I'm going to sleep. Hopefully I don't miss anything for the next eight hours. And it's basically the community going back and forth. Opium. <laughs> I hear a Chilean uh, is available to speed it. And then people are posting like games developed in Chile. I bought a Genesis Razor. Didn't see the Miranda's crashing LO. Would have not bought the poster. Well, Gala Film is different, right? Gala Film will be popping off in like 10 days based on what people have said or experienced. And this is Jay Hughes's post. The special occasion. I believe this was his last game and he is now retired. And as you can see, he's lost all of his server roles, etc. He's just a normal account. And then you go back and forth. Um, and as you say, thank you for being part of the American currency. You bent but anything. Be you went beyond anything a dev will do. Everybody did love his updates. And just like, keep going down until we can find another post by Bitbender when he starts waking up. And you can see people start replacing their profile pictures with Jay Hughes because they want him back in the, the team. He was one of the favorites. And people trolling about price. Keep scrolling down. I think Gala followed the move fast break things ethos a little too literal. 
and while it worked for the past era, not sure it's still valid as a business owner myself. I understand the problem when a team is not delivering as a customer on, of the other business. They lose a customer and that moment they alter my favorite product. I feel like Gala is at the point where the crackers show no matter how many patches they try to stick with break things. Part of the ethos comes at the movement of leading from the past three years of being only that. So another thing is for Legends Reborn, right? Gofu was like, the team was like, oh, we still got to develop a bunch of things. We've got to do all of this before we ship the game. And Gala was like, no, you're shipping the game. You're going to do it like this. The game's already good. It's enough for a play test to go live. It's going to be a good game. Just ship it. And then Legends Reborn goes live and the game is pretty good. It's amazing. Some of the changes, I think they still need a couple of card changes, balance changes, this back and forth right here. But crafting is in the game, leaderboards, rewards are in the game. It weren't in the first week, but after that, they still started adding some of those features. Didn't know I will need a different IP for a film nodes. Now I have one unseeable node. Yeah, I, I get that. Wait, no, it's if you want to win the film node, right? Because I tried to participate in that giveaway and I couldn't do the giveaway because it basically said uh, it's not available in your jurisdiction, which is the UK. But yeah. And then Oku is like, bought one more village of the vice count. Looking for a village of the bell is somebody is selling because a lot of people are starting to dump at that price. And the people that still play want, are going to be playing Miranda's have basically started buying up quite a lot of things. Every company has goals and requirements. If a team does not do these things, that's a problem. So this basically means Bitbender is saying that the old team wasn't doing certain things that Gala was telling them to do and that became a problem so this new team is more how would you say cooperative of what Gala asked them to do with the new lead being I think Musashi or somebody Musashi has hired ah uh, they all have to be on a different IP so they cannot run in the same internet access I did not know that. Most of mine are already on a VPS, so I guess I didn't have that issue, C uh, SSG. But I think there's, what is it? Crack nerd. This one has a fairly good price, right? Boom. This is the one I'm using. 30 bucks a year. Two cores, 45 GB pure SSD, which is 15 GB less than the recommended. 3 GB, which is 1 GB less. And everything else is fine. Let me see if I can get you my link. Um, uh, Rack nerd. My account. Uh. There you go. Minimize that. Go over to here. So that's the link for the Rack Nerd stuff. Make sure you click on the, the deal as well. The New Year's deal. Uh, what VPS is your recommended that will run all my nodes? Oh, running all your nodes? I'm not sure about all your nodes in one go, but if it's terms of cost versus what you get, then the Rack Nerd uh, sale is where you want to go. So basically, you use the link and then click on this offer. And then this is the one I'll use for your main like strong nodes, like the Gala Founders node, Film node. Uh, and then for the music ones, you can get away with running it on this if you want to. But it's 30 bucks a year instead of it being like 20 bucks a month. Excuse me, because if you go back, go to VPS and then go to this. It's basically like 24 a month and that's not how you want to do it. You want the, the yearly one, which is an amazing deal right here. I'm not sure if it will run all of them, bro. Maybe if you get the upgraded one, it might.
<laughs> if this was the case, now McCarthy can come and say it was a joke before release. I am personally excited about the future. I think it will speed things up a lot. So basically, Gala is pushing for speed because they don't like being slowed down. They like going fast uh, if they're the new Gala HQ takeover and a bunch of other things. It's not being outsourced at all like the thing uh, I think people are missing. It's basically Gala's team. It's not being outsourced to like another dev team. It is Gala's made team. And it just basically goes back and forth between a bunch of other answers. Great. And again, thank you for all that you do. Yeah, but B B Bitbender is basically Gala's punching bag whenever shit like this actually happens. Uh, RPG is still an MMO RPG. I would much love it, say MMO RPG instead of MMO and an RPG on the side. And then speed was not important to the community. The dev team, the vision, the communication with the Miranda's team was. So I would say yes, we didn't really care about speed as long as the final product was phenomenal. And then it's, you see quite a lot of deleted messages as well, because the mods did delete them. Do you follow what happens? AMEs like the traditional stock market, like Star Citizen, they dragged it forever and nothing ever happened. I have heard about Star Citizens like back and forth. I do not follow it. It's been what, like eight to 10 years in development. They sold a bunch of things and it's still not playable. Yeah, it's an ambitious game. I think Star Atlas is going to be similar to that, but we have to wait and see. And then basically just back and forth. On chain gaming pops in. Can node votes keep the old team? Uh, votes keep on the old team. What is the reason for the change? Announcements was very sparse on the details. And after this, he dumped all his assets as I showed before. And then if people can't have reasonable conversations where they're fired up, they can just chill for a week and try again later. So Bitbender moved from banning people to timing people out, which is fair. But seven days? I think. Uh, one to two days is enough for people to cool down and it just goes just back and forth so that was basically the cover of what happened and then if we scroll down to here tokenomics are the absolute essential in web3 and that's why mmorpgs make the most sense by far and then bitbender responds with agrees 100 percent. so we might see new tokenomics in miranda's that kind of makes sense well i don't know if it makes sense for the community side it will make sense for Gala side, so we'll have to wait and see. One of the biggest uh, fears right now, let's assume the Chilean team rocks and builds up Miranda's Master's Visions and takes it to the next level. What is the economy going to be like? Will it honor the original promises and vision? In my opinion, the foundation pieces of all there, 1,625 deeds, 50,000 exemplars, are 10 billion material per player-driven economy. My big thing is this. The player driven economy and i guess these all as well like there shouldn't be any more deeds there shouldn't be any more exemplars uh materium shouldn't increase until we get to the point where we have to start looking into these things i guess they can release a new race which they said they will release but until the game actually needs it they don't need to do it new deeds there is no new deeds maybe like new types of deeds for example you've got the land deeds which is the buildings and the the farming hamlets, the villages and all that. Then you've got the ships and docks, which is a new type of deed. I guess the next one will be like air deeds, like our uh, hot air balloons, like planes, dragons. I don't know, but you know, they can come up with anything to release. Uh, sorry for my typos. I'm getting ready for work as we speak. No worries, man. Just happy to have you here in chat, chatting back and forth. It's always appreciated when people are in chat and they actually chat. Lurkers are cool too. Don't get me wrong. I lurk quite a lot of the time. So nothing against lurkers. It's just nice to go back and forth. But then this type of the stream is where I'm going over things. So I guess I'm just going over it myself. Doug has to come in as reinforcements for the Miranda's team. Because, uh, well not Miranda's team, but the Miranda's channel because a lot of things are happening. And then I'm sure you will launch a game for obvious legal reasons. What we are concerned with is will it be a thriving Web3 economy or will it be another Spider Tanks EOA legacy? And basically what Virtual is saying here is like, are you just going to release the game, forget about it or have issues and not update it? Now, Bitbender is saying with the new team, they're going to be doing it fast and keeping it updated. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. But this is this is basically a concern for a lot of the people. Will it be a thriving Web3 economy? Because most of the economies by Gala 
or people that have partnership with Gala haven't been exactly great. They've been pretty shit. Especially the leaderboard only daily pool way of doing things. That is the shittest way. One, not shittest way, but it is one of the shittest ways. It doesn't take into consideration player time, player input, player skill, player resources, any of that stuff. It's just like, oh, you play, you reach a threshold, you earn VP, that VP gets converted into whatever, uh, this and that. That could be a part of it. Don't get me wrong. You can still have that system, but don't make it the main system. The main system should be the player driven economy and player input into the game and time. Now that you see quite a lot of new people joining uh, with out alts or bots. Uh, not bots, but their alternate accounts or uh, basically smurfs to make sure they don't get banned, which generally they do get banned right away. And then Virtual is like, will you get material for killing creatures? Will players run the economy? Will there be non-sensual, unnecessary gating economy mechanisms like honor? God knows what else. And we don't want none of that shit in Miranda's. Get that shit out of there. And then I don't think there's a response just yet. I think he comes back during the day because, well, he couldn't be in it all the time. Thank you, going. I think you have to go to like 12 in the morning before they start coming back. Now it's just when you go back and forth. So this is the meetup of the offline event. The man himself, Mr. McCarthy. Keep going down. Waiting for... Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I think I start to wake up somewhere around here. Hmm... This is LinkedIn profile of basically the one of the people in the team being said that they have been let go of. And then I wake up. What did I miss? Action combat only works if they have a fleshed out physics, which is true. From my experience, I prefer tab targeting. Tab targeting in most MMOs in third person. That's how several of them do it. That's what I prefer. Action combat, it can work, but they need to make sure their physics and the reaction to certain animations and hitboxes have to be on point. And most of the action combat ones are like Korean MMOs. For example, uh, Black Desert, Blade and Soul, all of those type of games. Western ones generally have tab targeting and third person movement with hotbars and skills. Which I don't mind. I like it. I saw that bid on a lantern. This is USSG token. Yep, I didn't get one though. And then this is lucky, lucky guy, man. But I do want a lantern. And then as you can see here, it's just going back and forth, back and forth. And then Bitbender does come up. I think that was given the news that people would respond well to a sale that they couldn't play with. Uh, I think I did. I didn't make the call here that the plan is to get things live so everybody can see that the game hasn't been killed before anything is sold. So what this says is we're going to launch the game, but there's going to be a sell after that. Like as soon as we get a game up and running, we're definitely going to be doing a couple of sales. Now everyone un needs to understand that this is going to, this is doing all of this because of our commitment to the game and the community. Basically, we're going to fulfill the promises. We're going to give you a game. Uh, it might not be the same vision of what you expected, but it'd be fast. We'll get it out fast. We'll get it out fairly fast uh, in the public development build where you can play as much as you want. But we don't know if your thing, like your masteries will stick, your skills will stick, your experience levels, whatever, that will stick, all the things you get in game, if that gets uh, continued or carried over or if it wipes. And then we just keep going back and forth. Uh, the white paper was released already. I think it was released last week. And then it's just like a back and forth. And then Musashi comes in during lunchtime. Now, this is where it gets interesting because, hey, guys, Musashi here, studio head of the San Diego studio. 
So basically, he's in the lead of that team. So some of you may not know me, but I've been in charge of Common Ground World for a while and the Vox for a few months. This is when he took over and when the announcement of the Vox shit happened, it was like Mushashi will take over to help the development of that team and make sure to get everything back up and running and on schedule. And then here in San Diego, uh, we are very talented devs who work hard in a variety of game genres, hardware and models, console, social media, F2P, Web3. Some highlights include several people who have worked on Fortnite for a few years and core developers, a highly successful Fallout Shelter, which was developed here in San Diego. Fallout Shelter is basically, I believe, the mobile game uh, where you basically level up. Yeah, this you go. You know, like those base building ones where you get heroes, then you get energy, you need to upgrade your base, do that type of stuff, send them on adventures, collect resources. It was pretty fun. I did play this. It was pretty freshed out too, so... Uh, the mobile side should be fairly good for The Walking Dead if they've had like this type of stuff. And then we'll be working on Miranda's with the same professionalism and dedication to FIFA promises we've seen in the Common Ground world will soon release its guilds and nodes features and Vox will soon finally start doing its releases in a few weeks as well. Now, as I said, it might not be version 0. They might just go straight on to version 1 based on the info from Chatterbox. And it will likely be updated... And we just go back and forth. Mushashi is here. I am the Nuke Fury in Avengers, putting together a team. And I'll go in-depth in particular projects if I am aided. And then I'm going to reserve my trust for the result. That's fair. We will get the results. So it's basically saying, I'll wait and see what you guys are going to do. And he's like, yeah, cool. We're going to do exactly what we say we're going to do. Uh, and then he's like, how many devs do you have? And he's like, I don't think I can share that number. And then Bitbender's like, I bought one of those lanterns. Uh... You know, you said you owe me something good, sir, for doing something awesome in Last Expedition. I'll take that lantern. And also, you owe me a barn, if I remember correctly. Let me see if I still have that video. If you go to recordings, shadow play. There you go. Let me load this up real quick. Uh, is it going to be... Boom. This is when Bitbender was doing the Christmas giveaways. I believe it was a barn. And then bang. Smiling Monster comes number one. Good sir, you still owe me something for Mirandus. I think it was a barn. I don't know if you still have the video. But I do have me a clip of winning. And I have not received it. So please, good sir. Make sure you give me the barn. And the last expression thing. Right, let's go back. There we go. we're getting with the weekly updates continues and bitbenders like it will it's an absolutely hard requirement for this so hopefully we still get the weekly updates as we have had with the old Miranda's team not sure if this month we're getting our devs acquainted with the code base and project and working with the current team so basically it's gonna take uh quite a lot at least this month a couple of weeks or close to a month to get the new team up and running and situated with the code the project the current team the vision all of that good stuff there is not going to be a playtest coming out this month. We might get something from May Mayhem, but that will be pushing it. Now, if we keep scrolling down, we'll introduce you to the core team soon enough. So I'm guessing there'll be a ahead of the game episode where they talk to the new core team in a couple of weeks. I don't think it'll be tomorrow because that's going to be way too fast. Uh, and then Bitbender's like, I know some of this is hard change for people that to come to terms with, but it is the absolute best thing for the game and the community as a whole. We are 100% committed to delivering on the promises that brought everyone into the project in the beginning and want to see them delivered on a better timeline. They're basically like, yeah, the old team was pretty slow. We want to speed this shit up. We want to get the game out there. We want to get everything up and running. Uh, and then just like back and forth. Let's go to Bitbender's new saying. What do you mean by this? How is that a 1984 reference applicable here? I don't know what the reference is. But not sure I can share with the numbers. And then Bitbender does go. You can share what you want. Huge impact. Da, 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 da. Good sir. There you go. Good sir. You still owe me a bond. And McCarthy is still with the company. Whether he works on Miranda's or not is not uh, something of a decision. But I don't think the door is closed to that. I have always loved his vision for the game. And he is absolutely a master storyteller. I think that is what something. Uh, there is something to be said to that. So as of now what involvement he has is still in flux but i hope he stays involved in some capacity so right now he's still a part of gala as a company 
but we don't know if he's still going to be a part of the Miranda's development team. But he's still there and he could do some type of input. And then Rusty Kip's like, I got your bond. And then I reply is like, oh, that's for the giveaway, which I just showed you guys. And there will be a transitional period. They are not gone overnight. So basically it means the old team's still there, but they're, they're going back and forth. I guess it was like a two week notice type thing. So down, you can share what you would like, but I would like to emphasize the team is growing quickly with aggressive hiring happening. So whatever numbers you share are not the end date just what it is right now and then he goes down we go to musashi so he gets the okay go ahead confirmation is like in that case our current transition team is around 10 people covering all areas of development engineering art production game design we were revamp uh, we we're ramping up to fulfill the rest of the spots more front end or back end engineers more artists if needed etc so now that they have the asset library ready based on the old team's work they've got quite a lot of the asset library sorted out they've got quite a lot of the sound effects the art uh, for the basic five areas, uh, they just need to program everything. So they need more coders, more front end and back end developers. Now the art team can still be there, but they will be working on things that the game currently needs. Not like all these like wallpaper and concept arts and other type of things. I guess they're going to be working as we find out in a bit on like all the deed layouts, all the blueprints, all the NFTs that should have models or are usable in game. Not at all. That probably what the head of the game regarding finance, uh, finding another job. Can't blame them for that. But the developers we saw posting looking refused to participate. Uh, so that's back and forth between the community. I'm hoping to get a build out that uh, never is brought down. So this basically means that they want to get a persistent playtest just like The Walking Dead out. And that way it buys them time for when like the development setbacks and all of that happened based on how the walking dead is doing it but now the walking dead has also been taken over by the chilean team so we don't know if it's going to be the same place uh same pace as the old team or this new team just like pops off content every now and again we'll have to wait and see and build from there but we need some time to get there we will keep you informed and just like go back and forth um a bit over 30 that was the old team we got together to the leads first for the transition and then we'll keep hiring for the other positions. So they basically got Masashi who's at the top. Then they've got leads for like five, six categories. And then it's slowly starting to hire everybody else. And it's going to be 30 or maybe even more based on what Bitbender is saying. Want to explain what a red flag is? <laughs> There's a bunch of face palms on that comment. I need to drink some water, bro. Been talking a lot. There we go. So we've got that. Let me scroll down. Not this is leads only. So basically the 10 leads have been hired and now they're hiring the rest of the development team. And then the crypto to bury is like, it's the same kind of bulls out decision, making that the made benefactor burn the 25 billion gala. Nobody had a problem with that one. I'm glad we have someone in charge, not afraid to make decisions. So he makes a good point like everybody was happy when they got free shit but now when he's making another tough decision which is to replace the miranda's team people are like oh what the fuck's going on so it's give and take we'll have to wait and see uh, so many little things that are forgotten same for the vox giveaways sent you a dm about this i will check that out because i think i'm pretty sure i'm near the end of this so give me like five ten minutes and i will look at the message so food no 10 is the core lead and they're getting ready to hire a bunch of other people the bullshit chicken crossing thing was the old vox team so bitbender didn't like it not the current one that sort of shit is why these decisions were made so he's basically saying to make sure that doesn't repeat and that shit uh doesn't continue to be involved in gala like using precious time resources and money to develop something that has nothing to do with, like the vox first making like a side app type of game we don't want that shit to continue. So they're basically going to be like, oh, we've made the decision before anything happens to revamp the whole team in terms of like the Marindus and the Walking Dead and get everything up and running and like guns blazing. Now, if it's similar to the Common Ground World team and the Vox team based on how they're moving, then it's not bad considering that the communications that they've had and how Common Ground World has been improved quite a bit. If they can do the same for the Walking Dead, and if they can do same for the renders, props up, thumbs up. 
keep to the same vision, make everything faster, proper, efficient, quality on control, then yeah, let's see how well the new team does. But we'll have to wait and see, because like I said, like this has been said in the Discord, a lot of people were sold on McCarthy's vision. Like McCarthy was Miranda's. And then when like Manny and Jay Hughes and all of those people started to get in the pictures, like, oh, this team, like this is the dream team. This is what Mirandas is. Now that they've basically got rid of that and shoved it to the side, everybody's like, well, what the fuck just happened? Like this was meant to be a team. Like, why did you replace it? Is the new team going to be just as good? And then as Mashashi says, we're passionate about delivering, which I guess they should be. Joking aside, all leads are happy to work on Miranda's and make it happen. Or well, that should be a no-brainer. Like, oop. everybody should be happy about working on Miranda's and getting it delivered. Uh, not as soon as possible, but at the best quality possible. Um, then we keep going. If you are in Chile, yeah, we're moving into an in-office work to accelerate progress. So basically, they're doing Gala HQ for the development side for the teams that are working on Miranda's and The Walking Dead. Now, that is a good thing. Like, Gala HQ has basically skyrocketed performance. So hopefully moving all the developers in Chile into one location where they can actually talk back and forth and it's not remote. They go into an office. They can share things. They have one server. Everything is accessed. They can just take two minutes to talk to somebody instead of sending a Slack message and waiting three days or a couple of hours to respond. So hopefully that does speed up the development which everybody, uh, well, which Bitbender is aiming for. And then we have a lot going on, man. Miranda's was just a relatively small effort in everything being built. So right now, the priority has shifted. Gaming, uh, especially Miranda's, is not Gala's main priority. The Gala Games ecosystem is just one of the ecosystems. They have Gala Music. They have Gala Chain. They have Gala Film. Then they have Gala Games. And they have the Voxverse. So... Gala is moving from a publisher to a platform. They no longer want to be the one that builds the actual things and keeps the live services going. They're going to build the tools, the place and the location for where everybody else comes to build on, for example, Gala Chain. So that is why they've been pushing Gala Chain quite a bit recently. And they're moving. It's basically going to be the Web3 Steam but on a larger scale, because they also have like uh, music, video, like all sorts of entertainment. And with the blockchain, anything can be built like dApps, DeFi, uh, other dApps, like anything like Metaflora, for example, uh, is a company that's using Gala Chain to track data regarding the sales of uh, marijuana in certain states, which is legal. So, yeah, it can be basically used for anything. So we have to wait and see how Gala Chain is actually utilized. I'd say take a look at Common Ground World doing great and going strong and the Vox is finally taking off for um, take some form and the beginning of release. So then we go down. Um, how many employees Gara currently has? And it's like uh, 350. So I guess they got rid of 50 because last I remember they said 400. And engagement and users have actually gone up in the last month. Several sold out sales. Common Ground World is looking great and hoping guilds and earnings do more. So this, I can confirm that, yeah, Common Ground World is doing gate. Uh, great, not gate. Uh, but the NFT sales have gone out. The new metas that they build link really well with the NFT sales. So a lot of people in the top 1,200 generally do buy these NFTs because it gives you that much of a boost. So for the Common Ground World model, it makes a lot of sense. Or the way that they're currently doing things. Miranda's and Walking Dead, different genres, MMORPGs. One's a top-down isometric, one's an actual proper MMORPG economy. So we'll have to wait and see. Hopefully they do all the battle testing in the other games before they start applying it to that game. Preferably use the Walking Dead Empires as a test before Miranda's to make sure the MMO side is working properly. Uh, then it's just like Bitbender going back and forth between the community. And then people going back and forth between Bitbender. And then this is what we tried to do, to be completely honest. The original idea was for the Chili team to be a live service support for the Miranda's team to accelerate a content cadence. This is something that has been in movement for months that was resisted and it was not something that was desired. So for business reasons, changes had been made. Now, what this is saying is basically that they tried to have Miranda's as the main team, like the old Miranda's team as the main team and then the Chilean team as a 
force that would help the main team. Now, the main team was like, we don't want the extra help based on this statement right here is how I'm interpreting it. And the business side, like the Gala side is like, yo, we need to speed up development. You guys are taking too long. Like we get it. You've got a vision, but you need to start pumping out content. And I guess there was friction back and forth. We don't know the full details. They'll be coming in just a sec. But then it was like, okay, well, if you're not going to do shit that we need you to do, there's going to be a shuffling, reshuffling, as they say. And that is what currently happened. Uh, but there you go. I don't want to go into this much detail, but yeah, we did try to work together. So basically it's like, oh, the two teams did try to collaborate and it looks like it didn't go well. It looks like it's an actual fire based on the current decision that they made. It looks like both, both the teams were not compatible. I know you didn't, but I want to be transparent with the people. This is a quick, this isn't a quick decision that was made by something that has to be in pro. It has been in progress for months and we just got hit with a bombshell like that yesterday. Passionate about delivery, but what about the gameplay? That is the thing, Toku, man. Gameplay is the, the main thing. The gameplay core loop has to be amazing for people to continue to play that game or it has the grind has to be addictive. Like old school RuneScape's grind. Some of the grinds in there are like crazy stupid, but some people still do it because the grind is addictive or the goal that they get once they achieve that grind, uh, the rewards that they get once they achieve that grind is phenomenal. So they need to do something. Some I keep going back between old school RuneScape and Albion Online because those are the games that I've played, I've enjoyed, and they have certain things going for them. Albion Online more for the Walking Dead Empires in terms of the model and how things are set up. And then RuneScape in terms of a general MMO RPG economy, as well as several others, but RuneScape being the main one. Now, we were originally tasked with working in parallel to the release content, helping with features and having the game play always on. There was resistance to having the game out in a capacity and working with us. So basically, uh, the old team was like, we want to do shit our way. And then Bitbender and I guess Gala as the business and the new Chilean team was like, yo, we're here to help. You just need to let us do shit as well. And they were like, no, it's going to mess up our like roadmap, or whatever. And there was resistance, as they say. We are under the bridge at this point. The things could have been different. Had been different, things happened. To be even more brutally honest, we said in 2022 that changes needed to be made to how things were done. And then in 2023, and finally some bigger changes had to be made that doesn't change the vision, just the speed of execution. So they're basically like, okay, we're not like effing about. We're not messing about. We're going to do everything we say. Everything's going to be on our, like our speed, or you're going to have to move out the way and get somebody else in who can do it at their speed. Let's quickly take a look at Tofu's message on the side right here. Ooh, thank you for thank you for that i think i have what 13 oh i'm just getting to that tofu if i waited two minutes it would have been the the way all right so let's get back to here and then tofu sent me a message uh if we go scroll down to 13 25 I ask is Mushashi the lead in all games now, Vox, Kramagor, and Wild Mirandus? And then he's like, no, he isn't the vision behind them, just an absolute execution wizard who collaborates very well. So he's basically the guy in charge who delegates the, the workload and he gets everybody working in the nice little cycle that they have been doing currently. And then the vision is basically like what they were promised and what he needs to fulfill for the persistent playtest game to be up and running. Now, if we scroll down here, Musashi says Common Ground World is around 25 people now, and Vox, I think, is close to 20. So they have a fairly decent development team. I would love it if the Marinders team was at least 30 to 40, as similar with the Walking Dead team, to make sure that those two games get up and running like, like that if they're talking about speed. And then it basically like how what are the teams doing who are they building what are the applications like all of that type of stuff just basically refreshing some of the stuff that they said earlier and then he's like i think people will realize very quickly this is a good thing might be a short-term oh no reaction but the updates uh should be coming out pretty quickly so we'll have to wait and see when the persistent playtest is actually 
excuse me, up and running. And then likely a non-exemplar character, deeds are capped and I consider those hard promises. So there will be no more, well, no more deeds for the time being. Exemplars will be capped at 50k. There won't be any classes coming out soon. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see. And then I jokingly chime in from work because I was on break. I was like, so when's PvP? Because I would love PvP to be in Miranda's. And then it goes back and forth between... Uh, Some people do want to see the light and the design choices. Okay, sure. But the way to do stuff doesn't create FUD. There is no way to do something like this without that, which is true. I mean, honestly, people will take FUD regards, which is true. People, Some people just want to hate on Gala. Uh, some people don't see both sides. I am trying to see both sides here to be objective if I can. But I can't say that I'm human. My emotions are going to get mixed in. Like I was expecting one thing and if I get another, it's not exactly going to be right. But I do try and get both sides. Now, we've only seen... Bitbender and Gala side in the Discord. None of the old Miranda's team have started to talk. Like McCarthy hasn't responded. Jehu's hasn't responded. They don't have a platform. So if they do want to come on and talk, if they can, feel free to jump in on the podcast Saturday or message me. We can get it working in one of the days, either Monday, Friday or Wednesday. If you are interested and want to get some of your side of the story out. Saturday is also good because that is when the podcast is happening. We should have Dr. Wookie come on this Saturday uh, if he can make it. I did open the invitation to him so we can go over all of this information on Saturday as well between Shadow Chaos, me and maybe Wookie, maybe a couple of other guests. Maybe we get Tendies on and a few other people that were big on Miranda's like Dubstep Rod uh, and all the other well, you don't want to make it too big because once you make it too big, it kind of gets hard to control the chat and back and forth. But we'll wait and see the podcast on Saturday. Usual time, like 9 p.m. Uh, I don't think it's UTC. It might be GMT. Like UK time, basically. 9 p.m. UK time. And then he's like, should I? Okay. He's like, I got a lot of deeds. Should I keep them on Gala Chain or should I wait for them changes? I don't want to swap them. And if it's on Gala Chain, keep them on Gala Chain. If it's on Ethereum, keep on Ethereum. There's no point in bridging back and forth because we don't know when actually you're going to be using them. You will have to eventually bridge them to Gala Chain to make sure they are usable. But uh, right now, just keep them on Ethereum because we don't know what's going to happen back and forth. Sounds like a great team for a discussion. Yes, that is what we're planning to do. We'll cover the head of the game episode that comes out tomorrow as usual. And then when we've got covered that, we'll go back onto like the legendary board news, like crafting is now in game. Then common ground, not common ground, champions arena stuff, and then the Miranda stuff. Miranda stuff will be the final thing to finish with the bang. But yeah, uh, there's Pong right there. And then yeah, it's in the Gala's blog. The highlights include Fallout, uh, Shelter, and Fortnite, which I guess are the two major big ones that they can name so people know. Uh, worked on tons of game genres and hardware models, including Web3. They've worked on quite a lot of Web3 games like Zedron and a few others, so they know how Web3 works. Bitbender says that getting Web2 developers to build Web3 games just doesn't work as they have experienced with the other third party games that they've had the same issues. And then we don't do staking because of legal reasons, so I don't think Gala will ever do staking. It's just basically going back to answering common questions of like, why is this happening? Like, what is the change? What is the new team? This and that. And then Bitbender says, I think so. I ha having a free to play option is important. So what would be the benefit of an NFT exemplar? Like the Walking Dead bonus earnings and keeping stats. So I'm basically trying to get a feel for if exemplars are actually going to be worth it or is it better just to be a free to play player? And attendee says the special abilities are unique to that exemplar, I'm guessing, which makes sense. Also, I guess you earn more if you have a higher rarity exemplar and maybe they accumulate masteries faster or they get lesser penalties. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, I don't want to see anyone on the generic poly style. I meant uh, the previous team. They should have a unique factor in it. And then I go to say um, low poly is needed for the servers to keep in check and entries map a minimum. And then... Uh, he responds by saying, not that, but based on the art style. But I do say, need to uh, need RuneScape's economy and wilderness. It's a game to study since they already done the battle testing for you. RuneScape has been out for 20 years, bro. They have done all the battle testing for you in terms of the gameplay and how people interact with the economy. All you need to do is add the WebC blockchain side to that type of game or genre, and you have a game that works. 
Stop trying to pay people out daily. Stop trying to put tokenomics in games that don't need those tokenomics in games. Sure, you can have tokens, but don't make it so that's the way people earn and that's the way people get rewarded. It makes sense that if you kill a legendary monster, you get it as loot. For example, in RuneScape, you kill... Let's go with the God Wars Dungeons. That's the last one I remember doing. I haven't been back. Or oh, Zora. Let's go with Zora. And Zora's loot table, 1% chance you get a Tanzanite Fang or one of the other items. You could have a 1% chance to get 100 or 200 material. That makes more sense. Don't just give it out willy-nilly to people that rank rank one in the leaderboards and you get like a thousand material. Like that shit needs to go. I really don't like the leaderboard model. I really prefer the player input into the game. Now, if we scroll down, no VC, but we will press to release about this in the next week or so. <coughs> and that is uh, they have they have secured 100 mil in funding just as a leeway. Uh, Bitbender did say this. This is a re thingy of the, the post, but I'm not going to go back up. I'm going to go down. And then Fortnite became one of the best games because of the large chunk of its sex being a new genre but also the collaborations and partnerships fortnite becomes what it is because everybody knows what fortnite is and then it basically goes back and forth here and it, that's not what he means the generic plug are no pro characters which i understood afterwards just keep going back and forth and then this is when jake dumped his shit which is all the majestic stuff and then memes about sandbag from feed and gala i buy as much gala as you have right now at 0 0.015 sell me all you want <laughs> uh the memes the memes that are going to be made with this will be legendary and then jake is that you by dubstep rod we're just back and forth the whole game is being real built from the ground up uh because we much agree that that was the sentiment this feels like a off track with poker go i guess it's, it's poker we'll figure it out that's important but first we need to check the code base features and server so the team don't know what actually is up and running so they're gonna have to take a couple of weeks just to go through the code go through the server find out what is set up what way and if the new team can adapt to it or they'll have to revamp it their way we'll just have to wait and see and then we keep going down and it's basically like a back and forth. I don't think it's visible, it isn't effective, it doesn't work well for really anyone. It currently is the creation of beef terms and information bottlenecks that cause long-term problems. And then why do you think decentralized development isn't feasible for Gala? Countless other companies and products do it. A right away of the quote, something like the quality of a manager is how well they can influence and control the others from a distance. The greater the distance, the higher the quality of management. That's not a bad saying. And then it's just like back and forth a bit bender answering some questions but there you go guys you've got the general gist of everything that has happened over roughly the last 24 hours and also this bottlenecks uh apparently apply it to build pressure and allow information to be targeted like a fire hose if you have a good bottleneck you can control the flow of information to a great effect if you have a bad bottleneck the kink in the hose and the flow stops internal bottlenecks are bad they kill development and communication which is true because Gala 2021, 22, 23 was all about remote work. And now 2023, mid 2023 and 2024, they built Gala HQ and everything has sped up. You can see the changes. They have taken effect. If you like it or not, it is the way shit is going to go from now on. Decentralized development equals Web3. Decentralized development, a bunch of people sitting in the bedrooms on the computers working on a central code repo. I get how it might look like Web3, but we can develop... Uh, but you can develop anything in a decentralized fashion and not have it be web 3, which is also true. And it's just basically going back and forth with people giving their input. And then it's like, is the rental system uh, with the FTP option, does that mean the rental system is not being, is going to be removed? And I say no, it can still be used for items crafted in game exact example, that legendary sword or the high level examples that you can rent. The only thing they don't need is the leaderboard with the daily reward pool, which, as you know, I've been saying for quite a long time, they need to get rid of this. Now, I don't know for certain, and then it just goes back and forth. Making sure... What's this? Pulling down. Yep, 
if you can catch up to the rest of it after like 5 30 it's just the community going back and forth and having their decisions and like a um, couple of banter here and there because there are enough example owners to get the game started the plan was to have a rental to give non-players the ability to play for free and earn a percentage of the material earnings miranda's master's plan was once the attraction more exemplars get used they introduce vanilla humans that plan was brilliant uh keep going down all right just jump to the bottom place who mentioned me corn what is all this corn Roll up I'm going to take like a two minute break because I've been talking for at least two hours and I need to do the gameplay side of things. Uh, the hero outcome all would be for Michael McCarthy to find a way of the crow found his own team back into his existence and finish the game. Apart from Gala, make his dream rally. He might be surprised what the community could come up with to save the assets and dream. I would help promote. I guess so. But cold funding leads to well no actually it doesn't lead to that many issues but we'll have to wait and see um wait where's the where's the tag somebody tagged me did they not all right i'm gonna go to the bathroom and i'll be right back and then we'll start with the gaming side of things guys i need to get my dailies ready Ooh, did nobody tag me? I'll figure it out later, bro. I'll figure it out later. Alright. Be right back. is back holy shit i needed to empty my bladder funny how the walking dead community did a freak out for a dev team change well it was between night and day lou compared to the walking dead team and uh the miranda's team walker slayers must be more chill <laughs> I think it was the thing of people were just attached to the Miranda's team. All right, cool. Let's start the gaming side. Minimize this. Go over to here. We'll start with legacy because that is fairly easy to do. Just poking fun. Oh, 100%. I know you're poking fun. I'm trying to throw a few jabs back at you. Move that over. Oh, my eyes. I should probably wear the glasses too, bro. Let me just start wearing the glasses. Probably start wearing these more. I bought them, might as well use them. There you go. Jabs? Mad? Those hurt. Well, depends if you mean like the punch jabs or the injection jab. The two way pun. All right. I'll just do legacy to get the daily gems and use them to buy a bunch of stuff. 
I don't even know why. Like, I don't think I'll be playing this game a lot. But it's like two minutes a day. That's two minutes of playing something else. And that generally adds up. But I got a show for the live stream that I do play. Oh, the guy like it. Uh, over 19, 17, 15, 11. What that says, if you got Amazon Prime, make sure to hit it over on my Twitch channel. All right, that's done. Move over, minimize this. Go back here. Uh, because of Empire is next. Uh, the. Are those injection ones still happening? I think they are. I got a notice like a couple months ago, like you get a new booster. I was like, I'm good, bro. The flu ones are still happening and a few other ones I've got a message for. Well, not me, but my parents, because they're getting close to 60. Seven unread, Stardust exchange, everything else is fine. Claim this, claim this, claim this, claim that, upgrade this, claim all the support ship. Move that over. Computer. Yeah, because of Vampire, like I said previously, he needs quite a lot of updates or work. Maybe they should hand this over to the Chilean team as well. Well, no, because Vampire is a third party developer, so I don't think they could do that. Uh, I don't need blue. I need red, and the only red ones are in here. Alright, let's just mine some red. in 23 minutes oh get yeah it's not a digger it's a hall of us hauler well not hauler but um resource one all right looks like that's done that is complete we switch over to legends reborn and i guess finish off with champions arena maybe some more the empires we'll see how well champions arena goes is now in the game right how does crafting do i do have a little ball 96 upgrade to do not sure how many people we can get here that is true i will be there for the next what, hour hour and a bit so if you do need if you get enough people i can jump on and help you Lou. uh is it deck editor no it'll be it will be deck editor wouldn't it it'll be cards and then throw unavailable and then craftable energy siphon but freeze despell all but burn physical attack but mindless cannot be target of cards removed when receiving non passive status damage or when targeted by opponent action card magic attack but freeze 
activation, but we need energy, expo all int up. Our defense, strength spike, energy siphon, it's boost. Physical attack, repeat a skirmisher. I need to craft this. I need 30 of that and 7 of that. Okay. I guess I have to deconstruct. Gives me red ones. I need blue ones. Okay, so I need more cards. Is this a blue one? That's a red one. Oh, I guess blue one is uh, the rarity. So since I've got five of those. Yeah, okay, I get it. So I need to construct five legendary cards to craft this one legendary card. That's not really a good trade-off, but considering if you don't have a lot. Uh, if you have a lot of one card and you need the other card, it might be like, I've got five of these. I don't know how to use these cards. Ignore res, can take some of those out. But yeah, I think that is a good one to get, that physical attack times one. Especially if I can get my Naga back and up and running, or a warrior deck. What else can we craft? Strength spike six, holy shit. <clears throat> Poison one for each card in the opponent's hand, double team, good attack. Hybrid, repeat of Enchanter. It's quite a few that you can craft. And physical attack. That is actually pretty good too. Heal four and physical attack, physical attack and evasion, or a res 15. Yeah, there's quite a few. Area immunity and triple hybrid attack. Area Blind and Berserk, Plague, Super Attack times 3, Repeat of Spellweaver, Area Poison 4, Int Spike, Magic Attack, Taunt, Area of the Spell Community. Alright, well, I'll not do that for now. No, uh, do I want to get what is the default deck? That, that, nope. Let's go over the champions, Vino. Over. And then play champions, Vino. Or something. Imagine hey, stuff. Nice quests. What have I done? Oh, that can finish later. Mainly the arena we need to pull out. And we want to rent a Mikko. Material. No, we have to build the Mikko. Uh, let's rent this one. Oh. Mm. Oh, I can't fight this guy, he's too strong. How are you your turn, bro? It should be my turn. I'm 
Hello. Guess I do auto for now. Who tagged me? Over. Well, we're in Champions Arena League. 3,867 points. Currently rank 18. Let's see if we can get it up to 15 before the end of the season. Though, if you guys are interested, I am selling the good wombo combo of Zafrina and Zoe. Do keep in mind, higher level champions will cost significantly more based on their promotions. Oh, at least I got rid of uh, the Vana. <laughs> you kill my Zafrina? No, my Zafrina lives. Is that over? Use this on the Beckett. He's the main damage dealer. He does not get stunned. Which is not ideal. Oh. Guess we'll use that. Move that over there. Use that on Zafrina. AoE damage. You know what, that live stream at the early bit did take quite a lot out of me. I might have to finish this early. I do have work tomorrow as well. I'm starting to feel it. You can see it in my eyes. I'm going, bro. I'll probably just auto battle the rest of these. Oh, I don't want to fall off my chair. Oh my God. This is basically demonstrating what you can do with the Zafrina. All that damage, bro. In the palm of your hands. I'm selling it. Move this over to here. Use that on Durex to get a taunt. Move that over. Use this. And you AOE. Oh, that works too. Direct will retaliate. What is it? Basic attack. Oh, that's nice. This is getting interesting. You're like my pipeline to the gala updates. I appreciate your service, sir. Well, I do appreciate. Well, I appreciate if you're actually reading it, and it's as long as it's helping you. 
Just type you're welcome. Might need to get legendary auras from my champion. what I needed to do. Yes. The yellow and blue is pretty nice. 59 seconds. What are you talking about, bro? For Gala Games slash Battle Showdown Gambit Partnership. What does that even mean? We're thrilled to announce a partnership with Battle Showdown Gambit, revolutionizing Web3 Gaming, integrating Gala's upcoming G chips with Battle Showdown Gambit. I guess that's related to Poker Go. Join the Battle Showdown Gambit thing. Game theory rewards and event skill. Skill fire spectator mode? Explore, uh, read more about it here. We can figure that out later. <laughs> You know what, guys? I tried to push through, but I think I'm going to have to call the live stream. I might have to end it early, too. The The first two hours did do quite a bit toll on me, especially since I did four hours the day and I got to do the same thing tomorrow. Uh, but I am glad I got the live stream up and running and I got the information that you people wanted to know out there. So you can always watch this back, send it to your friends, etc. So if you enjoyed, you can. <laughs> if you enjoyed the content, then before we finish off, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe over on YouTube. Smash the follow button over on Twitch and X, and make sure to subscribe to both if you are feeling that extra generous. If you have Prime, then make sure to sub. And if you want to keep up to date with all the Gala Games ecosystem, you don't want to play the Discord mini game. I do that for you. All you have to do is join my Discord. That's where I post quite a lot of the information. So if you want to keep up to date and you don't use Twitter, you can use Discord and I post it there as well. As always, guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you on Friday's live stream as well as Saturday's podcast. Peace.